Hi, my name is Alex and today I am going to teach you how to set up your files for White Ink. Before we start, there are a few things you need to keep in mind. Plan your artwork ahead of time and make sure that all the white ink elements are easily selectable. This will be less of a headache down the road. Next, you have to also familiarize yourself with what overprint means and if your objects need to be set as overprint or not. Don't worry, we'll briefly go over this topic later. The last thing to remember is that when printing, white ink is usually the first ink that gets printed or applied on the label. So keep that in mind while designing. All right, let's get started. For this lesson, we're going to start working with this artwork of this camping label that we have created. Currently, this artwork is in a layer called Artwork in my Layers panel. If you don't have a Layers panel, go to Window and make sure Layers is checkmarked. For white ink files, we need a separate layer called white ink so that we can put all the elements that require white ink in that layer. So let's do that right now. Go to the very corner, click on create new layer, and let's name this layer white underscore ink. This is to keep ourselves organized layer. Now let's go back to the artwork layer. I'm going to leave this artwork right here so I have a reference of what elements require white ink. I'm going to make a copy of it, making sure that I'm in the artwork layer into the artwork. Once that is done, now I'm going to refer to this reference artwork and select the elements that require white ink. So I've selected the background, the little camping tent, and the word camping. I'll copy those elements I'll paste them in front using Control F, and these selected, those are the selected uh, elements. I'll select them and move them over to the white ink layer. Now, currently, those three elements are on top of all the other artwork. Now, we need to select all the elements in the white ink layer and give that a spot color, a white ink spot color. This is how our system knows where the white ink needs to go. To create the white ink spot color, go to the swatches panel. If you don't see the swatches panel, go to window and then try to find swatches. Once you have the swatches panel open, go to the little hamburger menu at the very corner, top right corner, click on that and create a new swatch. For the swatch name, make sure and this is very important that the name is called white with the capital W and ink with the capital I. For the color type, make sure you call it a spot color. That's very important. And the color mode, CMYK, of course. The color over here, the visual color, can be anything. But ideally, I like to keep it as 60% uh, magenta. Or uh, doesn't matter. Um, once that swatch has been created, you'll see a little box with a white dot. That means you've created a spot color. Select the elements in the white ink layer that requires the white ink and click on the little box that should apply the spot color to those elements. Once the spot color is applied, we need to start thinking about overprint and what elements need to be set as overprint. What is overprint? Well, overprint basically means that any object or color information that you have set out, when set to overprint, will allow every other color information underneath it to print. In this case, we have the white and clear at the very top. Now, if we were to send this to print right now, we would have white in all the pink area and this uh, border, but every information like the trees, uh, the number 1995, and this 
um, graphic element will not print. To fix this issue, we need to select all the white ink elements and set them to overprint. This means all the artwork or color information underneath the spot color will print. Okay, let's set this up. To get your workplace set up for overprint, the first thing I would suggest doing is going up to view and making sure that overprint preview is set up. Once that is clicked, not much has changed over here. That is because we have not changed these elements to overprint. Okay, let's do that right now. Make sure you're on the white ink layer. Select all the elements that need overprint. Go to your attributes panel. If you don't see your attributes panel, go to window and select attributes. And that should open up this panel. Once the panel is open and all the elements that require overprint is selected, click on overprint fill. That should make the pink spot color transparent so now that you can visually see what objects will be printed. And since white is the first color that gets printed, what you're going to notice is the pink area is going to be white and all the color information like for example this brown and this orange will be printed on top of that white. Once you set all the elements that you require white to overprint, essentially the file is ready for export. Now let's talk about a topic that's a bit more advanced, knockouts. Let's say your client said they want the still tent to be the color of the stock. Currently, if you print the file, the little tent will be printed white because it contains the spot color that we applied that's white ink. To achieve this, we need to knock out the little tent from the spot white color. Now, the easiest way to do this is to create a new layer. Make sure you name your layer, Knockout. Go back to the artwork layer. Copy the image of the tent. Go to the Knockout layer. Align the graphic element on top of the tent. Make sure that overprint is not set to fill. What this will do is this white element will knock out any color underneath it. And since this color is visible white, it prints the color of the stock. Now that that's done, it's time to clean up your workspace so that your file is ready to upload to Cinelight.com. First thing to do is you notice that we have an extra copy of this label over here that we were using for reference. We no longer need this, so we can delete that now. And it would also be best at this step to make sure that everything that is type or that was a type uh, in your artwork is now outlined. In this case, uh, originally the word camping was a type. I'd convert that to an outlined object, uh, as well as in 1995, that was, in, uh, that was type that has been outlined. Once you've outlined your fonts and your layers are all set up correctly, your file is now ready to be uploaded to Cinelight.com. So, uh, how to save? Go to File, Save As. Uh, make sure that you name your um, your artwork. In this case, I'll just call it label. Uh, make sure the format is set to AI. Cinelight uh, prefers that you send in AI files for a role label jobs. And hit save. Um, for the version, I would try to put the highest version of Illustrator that you currently have. Some of the older versions uh, do not have the ability of layers, and so when you save it out and when we try to open, the layers would not uh, show up. Uh, and this is very important. So it's best to always choose the highest version of Illustrator that you have. In this case, I have Illustrator CC, so I'm going to save the document in Illustrator CC and save the document. And that's it. Once you have done so, you can take the AI file and upload it to Cinelight.com and have pre-press check your file. Um, 
if you have followed this tutorial, you should have no problem getting your file approved. Hope this tutorial helped. Thank you.